So in today's gospel, we have the healing of the blind man near Jericho. It's a beautiful gospel, which I, th I think it's always very important to, to, to make that story relevant to our lives today. Otherwise, it's a wonderful thing that happened 2,000 years ago, and we're really happy for the blind guy who got healed 2,000 years ago and then subsequently died, uh, obviously, but you know, had sight until the end of his life, and great. But if it has nothing to do with my life, then what is the point of this gospel story? Like, if we don't know how to draw something from this story for us today. So, a couple of details, and the details are always important, especially in the Gospels, because generally speaking, they're sparsely written, that they don't go into a whole lot of detail. So when they do, the detail is important. So what does it say here? Uh, so the blind man is on the side of the road begging. So keep in mind, there was no social services for the poor, for invalids, for orphans, for widows. If there was no one who could pay for your meals, you didn't eat. It was, it was quite basic. Like, so if, there, if you couldn't earn your own bread, you didn't eat. So if there was no, as I say, social welfare system, so those who were sick ended up on the streets because, again, there were no hospitals. Hospitals were for the rich. Well, there weren't even hospitals in the same way that we understand them. You would call the physician to come to your house. You might have a, a house doctor. But again, that's only for the super rich. Ordinarily, the, the, your regular people, if they could afford them, again, you always had to call the doctor to your house. But that was only for, the, for those who, who, who had the means to do so. So this blind man is on the side of the road begging because he's no choice. He's no choice. When he hears that Jesus is coming, he calls out to him. And this is what's uh, wonderfully true about our own situation today. He calls out to Jesus and many of the people around him tell him to stop. Now, this guy has no hope. He has no way of earning an income. And, he does, and generally speaking, for blindness, there is no cure. Once you're blind, that's kind of it. Even in our, in our own day, you can't reverse blindness. Well, it, well I suppose there are certain temporary blindnesses, alcohol and juice and things, I don't know. But generally speaking, uh, blindness is a fairly permanent issue. Uh, so, but back in the day, absolutely. So this man has no hope. And so what do we do when he, when he reaches out to the Lord? What, what does the crowd do when this man reaches out to the Lord? They tell him to stop. So they, they crush this little flame of hope that he has. You know, they try, they try to crush it anyway. So they tell, him to, they tell him to be quiet. And I love this. So what does he do? Shouts out all the louder. Because he's got nothing to lose. Shout, nothing to lose. Shouts out all, Jesus! Son of David! Have pity on me! Be quiet! No! Nope. Jesus! Son of David! Have pity on me! And Jesus, like, see, what, what the, like the, the currency, if you will, what, what Jesus hears, the language of Jesus is the language of faith. When he hears faith or sees an action of faith, this is what really moves his heart. So he sees this man who has suffered an awful lot for who knows how long, who now has been told by the crowd to wish, just keep it to yourself, right? There's no hope for you anyway. We've, we've important businessy things to do over here now. Jesus is going to talk to us and he's going to say important things and maybe heal some of us. But for you, no so he shouts all the louder. Jesus hears this language of faith and orders that the man be called to him. And when he comes up to him, I love, I just thought, this scene is so delicate, so typically Jesus. -like. <coughs> so this man who's quite clearly blind, if you've ever met someone who's blind, when you talk to them, they can't make eye contact exactly with your eyes because they don't know exactly where your eyes are. They can't. So they look in your general direction, but they can't really see where your eyes are. So it would have been very, very, and Jesus knows the man anyway. So it would have been obvious that the man was blind. So what does Jesus say to him? I will heal you from your blindness. No, he doesn't. He shows him the dignity of asking him, what is it you want me to do for you? Because who knows, maybe his greatest pain was actually uh, an abusive father. Maybe his greatest pain was the rejection of his family. Maybe his greatest pain was when he got diagnosed with this. Maybe his wife left him and took the kids and he hasn't any contact with him. Maybe that was his greatest pain. We don't always know. We, what we, the person beside us, we may think we know what their pain is. Maybe we don't. Maybe it's not the obvious thing at all. Maybe they, they suffer some, from something physically, but like there's a, a much deeper wound in there. So the Lord asks him, you know, like shows him the dignity of, of allowing the man to express himself. I'm not going to presume what you need. What can I do for you? And he says, Lord, that I may see. 
Lord, that I may see. And Jesus again hears this expression of faith. Like, I trust you, Lord. I trust that you can do this. And this is what moves his heart to this day, also in our prayer. Jesus says to him, receive your sight, your faith has saved you. It's interesting as well, it says your faith has saved you. Not just your faith has healed you, but there's something bigger going on, something greater going on here. In scripture, throughout the the Gospels, (coughs) the miracles of Jesus aren't called miracles, they're called signs. Signs. Signs point to something greater. So that Jesus didn't come to earth just to, to heal the sick in, in the sense of just to eradicate disease. Because if, if that was his goal, wonderful and all as Jesus is, he wasn't very successful. I mean, he only had like three years of mission. And even in that, it's not like absolutely everybody he met was healed. It's not like, you know, leprosy disappeared from the Holy Land. Uh, there were still many, many sick people. Because this, the, the, the healings aren't just about the eradication of a physical evil but he's trying to point to something bigger. If I'm healed, if I receive the gift of healing, what will I do with it? If I receive a healthy body, what will I do with it? Will I use it to seduce people? Will I use it to bully people? Will I use it to oppress people, to intimidate people? Or will I use it to serve? Will I use it to glorify God? Will I use it to love? Will I use it to, to assist the needy? What will I do? If I have a healthy body, what will I do with it? It's a, it's, it's a question we don't really ask ourselves much. Like, we, I, I feel I, I have a pain. I want the pain gone. And the Lord might ask us, well, yeah, if, if I heal you, what will you do with your healthy body? Because I, I remember I was talking to a person once who had a, a, a bad issue with, with, their, with their foot. There was um, uh, a lot of history there. I won't go into the details. Oh, you know who it is. Um, so, and we spoke about like healing, and and I asked them, well, what, what, what do you want, what do you want the healing for? And she said, I just love to be, I love to be prettier. You know, and I said, great, okay, what would you do with that? Well, you know, guys might like me. True, true, yeah, and and what like? And what? They might like you. And then what? What's, what's the big picture like? They might like you. So they find you attractive. Good. And what? Well, I don't know. Well, see, you need to know. <laughs> you need to know. Because if, if with your now prettier body, you're able to you know, attract more guys' attention and end up doing stupid things with them, then it's better you're not healed. It's better you're not healed. Because now your healthy body is risking your soul. So what do you want the healing for? Is there a way that you can use your, your, your healthy body to serve God more than you can serve him now? So what happens at the end of this gospel? Instantly his sight returned and he followed Jesus, praising God. Sorry, the man himself starts to praise God. So it's not just he has, he's now a healthy body so he can go back to his trade and you know, we have one, one person who now is economically more stable. This isn't the point of the, of the healing. The healing. The point of the healing is much bigger. The point of the healing is much deeper. The point of the healing is much, much more important. To save the salvation of the man's soul. That's what's important because that lasts forever. This wonderful dude, whoever he was, now has healthy eyes, but the uh, chances are 40 years later he died anyway. No offence to the Lord. I mean, it was a great miracle. It was a great miracle. It was. But like, the point isn't that he will live forever in a healthy body. Eventually we have to leave this earth. So what's the point of the healing? The point of the healing is to save the man's soul. That's what the healing is for. Okay? So he starts praising God. And all the people who saw it gave praise to God for what happened. Now we're talking. Okay. Now this miracle serves a much greater purpose. The miracle serves the purpose of deepening people's faith. And now with this faith in Jesus Christ, now they're able to affront their own crosses. They're able to affront their own grief. They're able to affront their own rejection. They're able to affront old age, difficulty, addiction. They're able to affront all of these things because now they have a deeper faith in the Lord. And now that they can affront all of these things with faith, it also means now they're, going to be, they're getting ready for heaven, where illness is no more. This is ultimately where every illness is cured. Do you know, so when we say, like, I saw this atheist uh, website once where it said, it went through scripture, and it said, Jesus cured, I think it was 20-something lepers, right, in or around. So, like, so, so I had a kind of like a, a score, you know, a scoreboard. 
So it had um, cure, curing of leprosy, Jesus, 24. Modern medicine, 2,593,000, you know, so like Jesus is useless, modern medicine is way better. Like, stupid argument for a start, because that wasn't the Lord's goal in coming to earth. And secondly, where the intelligence and the ability and the resources come from for modern medicine to heal people, where did that come from? Did we make it? Did we make our own intelligence? Do we make the, the elements with which we are able to create cures? No. And ultimately, ultimately, when our lives here end, all of us are cured. All of us. When I find myself before the Lord, if the Lord finds me worthy of being with him for all eternity, all ailments are cured. All of them. Your wonky hip, your stiff fingers, your slightly asymmetrical face, although that, I think that's cute. <laughs> I, think, I think we're allowed certain little defects that make us lovable anyway. You know, do we, have, do we all have to be like supermodels and all get, you know, is that how we have to look in heaven? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I think we see the deeper beauty of people and ourselves in heaven. But what we do know is all illness is gone. There's no more death. There's no more suffering. So... When, I, when we pray, Lord, Lord, heal me, the answer effectively is always yes. The when, that varies. The when might be very soon. The when might be at the end of our lives. But we will all be cured. All of us. So Jesus cu curing 20 whatever it was lepers in modern medicine, curing millions more, no, nah, doesn't work. Jesus eradicates not just leprosy, but sadness, depression, broken hearts, addiction, cancer, tumors, blindness, broken hips, bones, psoriasis, whatever it is, everything and anything, all of that will be cured when we find ourselves with him. He's the victor over sin, over death, and over all the consequences of sin, one of them being illness. So we can bring all our hearts, all our loss, all our pain, all our ailments, we can bring them all to the Lord in faith and cry out to him in faith, internally preferably. Um, you can do so in public as well if you wish, but maybe not during Mass. Um, but we can call out to the Lord in faith. Call out to him. In your own heart, you can. You can in your heart of hearts, when you pray, and you go into that, 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 that garden of your own interiority with the Lord, and you're walking there with the Lord in, your gar in this, this, this garden of your own heart, you say, Lord, I really, really need your help here. I need you to help me. I can't help myself. I can't. I never really could. And I have to stop relying on myself to fix this problem. I need you. I need you. I need you. And I trust that you can do this. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. And then give it to him. The Lord actually knows what he's doing. He's been at this for a long time. And when he hears that language of faith, he sees you not just as a, a patient with a, a, a broken hip or, or blind eyes or some organ that's not functioning. He sees you in your completeness and he sees the value of your immortal soul which he has died for and he says your faith has saved you so we ask the Lord today that we can really believe those words today that when I come to the Lord with faith and I call out to him I cry out to him with faith that he will heal me it's just a question of when but he will heal me and I pray that it will be soon but if not Lord I still trust you I still have faith in you we pray Lord for that deepening of our faith that we may place all things in your hands and wait patiently for your reply Amen